So we've left ourselves just enough time to guess the handicaps on all five of the uh, provincial football games that are on at the weekend. Gary is the reigning champ, as usual here. Uh, PJ's vowed all week the trash talk has been unbelievable in our Slack channels as PJ's vowed to knock him off his throne. All he has to do is check uh, the website where the results are, but he's vowed not to do that. Uh, instead, he's going to guess them. We're going to start with Saturday's uh, Munster semi-finals starting at 3 p.m. in the Gaelic grounds, the LIT Gaelic grounds, where Limerick uh, talked a bit about Limerick with Darren O'Sullivan last week and their unbelievable improvement over the last few weeks and how they might fancy themselves to knock off Cork PJ as a challenger in these uh, in the rules that I make up every week, uh, completely afresh. I'm going to let you go first in this one. Uh, it's been like a, I think as you discussed, it's been a really good year for Limerick so far. I mean, like nearly getting stay in Division Three, like ne near like the one two games, uh, like last uh, Tip and Whitlow. But I, I feel like this is going like like clear, you know, this is going to be like the end of of their good year, like. Uh, it's an interesting car team to me because they have a lot of like really good young players coming through. Um, they've like Sean Ian looks like a really good player in the full back line. Um, Ben O'Donnell in the full forward line. A young lad named Colin Manny. All these lads are like won another twenty All Ireland two years ago. So they they, they they seem to be bringing kind of like a new attitude to this car team, which definitely helps. Uh, car favorites, I think. Cork minus six. Cork minus six. Okay, Gary. Uh, yeah, obviously. when you're thinking there, actually, I will just mention Chris Quinn makes a very, very good point on YouTube here where he says, What about Dublin Keen, Dublin's Keen O'Callaghan's mullet? Um, and again, and another, another mullet, mullet hit by, by a helmet, exactly. Yeah, but it's definitely there. I, I, I got a glimpse of it. Um, uh, you know, it reminds me also of Keen O'Sullivan, who had an interesting haircut or two, uh, you know, to recently, recently retired. But, um, his mustache obviously is the most defining, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Thing that he'll have in his in, in in his career in in terms of his hair anyway maybe the all irelands will define him slightly more but anyway gary go on cork and limerick we are we have uh cork minus six <laughs> yeah like obviously limerick had a good win last week it's kind of at least they got a win under their belt though unlike claire who got drawn against kerry in the first round so uh, uh, cork will be favorites i'm gonna say i'm gonna go minus seven i think it might be a little bit more than minus six Gary, you're just unplayable. Unplayable it is Cork minus seven, which I think, again, I would love if I was Limerick. The higher, the better if you're Limerick in this game, regardless of, you know, maybe Cork will win. They are obviously rightly favourites, but higher, the better here. Let's write them off. So uh, you have a chance to take this one, but we're on uh, we're on safe ground for PJ here. Seven o'clock, Semple Stadium, Munster Champions Tipperary versus the, uh, you know, up and coming young lads. Uh, ho ho hope to put on a show, and if they win, they win in the Kingdom of Kerry. How's this one gonna go? I wonder, has there ever been a defending Munster champion coming into the championship after been relegated from Division Three of the league? I'd say it's probably unlikely. <laughs> um, but like, obviously, Tip have had an absolute disaster of a year. It's, it's this is not the game they want right now. I would say. Uh, I wonder will Kerry have a bit of a leg up after seeing Dublin at the weekend? Like, you know, not exactly setting the world alight. Stephen Cluxton questions there. He probably isn't going to come back. It looks like. Uh, so like obviously Kerry are gonna be big favourites here. I don't know, pick your number. Like minus twelve, I'll say for Kerry. Okay, PJ. You have a chance yeah. here. Uh Kerry at, like somehow Kerry against Clare managed to score three twenty two, win by what seventeen points, but also dampen the hype. Uh, it was a remarkable achievement. Like a lot, a lot of that had to do with scoring two points after the break, before the water break. So uh, I, I'm sure yeah. Peter Keane did that. That'll have uh, made Third Peter Keane very, very like you know. We all know what Peter Keane is like. Peter Keane doesn't like the hype. He'll be he'll probably be pretty happy with that. Um, interesting to see Sean O'Shea came close, close to goal in that game. I'll see if he, that continues in this one. This tip team, like it, like there is a feeling that they like they achieved something last year, and then like what more do you think you can do after like after you win you win Munster there probably is a feeling of achievement and then you know it, maybe you're not as motivated in like the following year um also you consider they are without Colin Reard like Colin Reard was so important mm. last year when when they like in those when in Munster um I I do think that minus 12 is way too much though it's like it's like a decent temporary team I'm gonna say 
Kerry minus 10. What did Kerry beat Clare by in the end? 17. 17, right. I think that might have influenced it. As you said, everyone said that Clare played well and Kerry didn't even play that well. This handicap's insane, lads. For the Munster champions, it's Kerry minus 16. Jerry? <laughs> Um, which I, it was exactly my word, PJ, when I saw it, I have to say. I, uh, Gary is once again the 2 nil lead, but I have to say I, I, I'm i just perplexed by that. That uh, And look, they might well beat it. That's the other thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll move on to Ulster. This is their very old school uh, handicaps for the Munster Championship. We we're heading towards a Cork Kerry final, if the bookies are to be believed. Um, Tyrone versus Cavan in the Ulster Championship is also on Saturday, 4.30 and uh again the ulster champions are in action here and you know they're going to oma tyrone i will tell you right now our favorites mm. but i won't tell you by how much uh we, we think about this cabin team's progression here we got relegated from division one 2019 got to an ulster final got relegated from division two last year won ulster relegated from division three 2021 probably gonna get knocked out <laughs> what would be the next step would it be winning the All-Ireland or reaching an All-Ireland final maybe and then yeah. finishing bottom of Division 4 to win the All-Ireland match <laughs> probably yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, winning the All-Ireland this year would probably be you know you, you don't want to be you don't want to step too many rungs up the ladder at the same time no we wouldn't want uh, to be unrealistic either I yeah. suppose would we yeah exactly. yeah All-Ireland final exactly. that would be yeah um, yeah yeah Tyrone, yeah, like you said, Tyrone, that's your favorite. Uh, like, first, like, interesting, like, for a lot of these teams, uh, Ulster, Ulster, like, the, this is their first game in a month for, mm -hmm. for you know, since the, since the, like, the, the relegation games in the league and the promotion games in the league. Interesting how they would use that. Uh, Tyrone could have got him a chain back, I think, could be interesting. Um, it'll also be interesting to see how they react to that, like, that defeat to Kerry. Um, after you got walloped to Kerry in that, in that league semi final. And it was it like it was interesting. I was listening to a BBC podcast where uh, Thomas Nimblock was saying he spoke to Brian Dewar after the Kerry game, and he was like, it, it wasn't like oh you know we we weren't out there with a full team, we weren't trying. It was like they were distraught. They were they were very very disappointed with how they played against Kerry. And um, yeah, I it's it's very hard to know how to judge this game team. I gonna say Tyrone minus six. Okay. Yeah, like obviously Calvin and Kerry at the minute. Uh, there's always an Ulster uh, tax, I think, in these sometimes with the handicaps. Like if this was the exact same situation, it's like a similar situation to Kerry and uh, Tipperary, although you would say there's less of a gap between those and we looked at that handicap. So I think it would definitely be more than minus six. So I'd say minus seven. Okay. PJ got it bang on. It's Tyrone minus oh. six. And I do think there's a there's an element with the league for me is like, you know, what did Shane McGrath call it last week? As, as useful as a, a, a handbrake on a canoe. That was the hurling league. I do think we probably took a little bit more from the football, PJ. But at the same time, you know, from Cavan's point of view, they're going in here as Ulster champions. And like, they, they don't consider this a kind of a lost cause or anything like that. You know, they'll absolutely sort of um, think they can beat Tyrone if they meet, if they play brilliantly on the day. I don't know, but the funny you mentioned the Ulster tax, Gary, because the score lines in the Ulster Championship this year have been and it was it's been the case for a couple of years. It's not as open a championship or as as um as close a championship or as every game is possible as people think. Like our man won by what four goals yesterday. Uh Monaghan had a big win over for Mana and Donegal hammered down and they're the three games we've had so far have been three hammerings, you know. So uh definitely um Definitely a good point, I would say, even though it brought you away from the uh, correct score. So 2-1. Uh, uh, Gary dominated Munster, but if uh, there's a possibility here that, that PJ is owning Ulster, but we'll find out now because we're going to Sunday at 4 o'clock for the other quarterfinal to see who will meet Tyrone, you guys say, in the semifinal. It's Donegal at Bally Buffet against Derry. What do you think, Gary? You're up first, sir. Yeah, an interesting game because obviously Derry are coming into this on good form. The one they actually had, even had a league final that they played in. Uh, so, mm. and a, a cracking jersey. Yeah, and a cracking jersey too. Uh, jersey <laughs> to the football, I would say. Uh, but Donegal then, I don't know, like yeah, Donegal are just always, you, you always think they're dependable until they let you down then, inevitably, uh, every year. I, I, I'd still fancy Donegal to win this. 
think it could be tight though. I know you're saying there has been some not so tight games, but for the handicap, I would say minus four for Donegal, I think would be about right. Yeah, I, I think the, the big question for this game is does Michael Murphy play? Yep. I mean, like it's. Awesome. I, 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 and I think that Donegal should be able to get past. Like Donegal are would think of themselves as all Ireland contenders, rightfully, rightly. And if they, if you are going to win Ireland, you should be able to win this game without Michael Murphy. And I, like I don't, they should have been able to beat down. They would have beaten down. They did beat down without Michael Murphy eventually. Like they played for mm. seven, they played for forty minutes without him. They absolutely hockeyed them. Um, like it, it seemed like an unnecessary risk to play him in that game. I like you, you've got your prob like whoever wins this game, you're come up against the winners of Tyrone and Cabin. You would think that would be Tyrone, but like you know they, they are favourites, and I think they should be Cabin. Um, so I, I would rather have him for that game than like unnecessary. Like I don't see why you risk him in this game. Um, they're like they look like a very good team. They do like Connor Glass is like it's like just come come back. He's what, like a year back from the AFL. He looks like he's like one of the best players in Ulster. He's one of the best, could be one of the best players in Ireland, like eventually. Like mm -hmm. um, Shane McGuigan as well, like a really good player for them. I think they got a favourites, even if they don't have Murphy. Yeah, I Gary's probably about right with minus four, but I, I don't think it'll be minus three. So I'm going to say they got minus five. Okay, it is done. You got lads. I'm a bit all over the place with these handicaps Ooh. this week, but Derry have won how many games by 40 points this year? I know Division Three is very different to Division One, but Dunny got minus six, as people will see on the screen there, is the actual uh handicap, which means that it's two all here and we've a one game shootout and mm. PJ is going first. But the bad news is, lads, it's the Connick semi final between Mayo and Neutron. And if anybody gets this exact, you're cheating. Uh, so. <laughs> Castle Bar, Sunday, 2 o'clock. Poor old Leitrim. Uh, the, the winner plays Galway in the Connacht final. Um, we saw what Mayo did to Sligo earlier in the year. Or, you know, what, last week, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't too pretty. And you would argue that Leitrim are in a very similar place than Sligo at the moment. Uh, Leitrim actually lost by seven points to Sligo in the league. That's, okay. uh, that's something to consider here. Uh, Leitrim, bottom of Division 3 North. Uh, Lost to Sligo, lost to Loud. But then, interestingly, only lost to Antrim, like a good Antrim team, by a point in the final game. They did score 50 points in three in those three group stage games in the league, which is, like, 50 points in three games is a good, like, it's, it's a decent score, I think. Um, yeah. It's just, like, uh, Mayo without killing O'Connor uh, is, is, like, an also thing, big thing in favour. Like, like, they have to, like, did okay with against Sligo last week. Uh, last weekend for last like without him. Dar McKay looked like a very good player. Ryan O'Donoghue who looks like a reliable player on the freeze. A man like definitely not lacking confidence. Uh, how big do you go on this? Is like is, is just <laughs> like, like big, Dublin were minus twenty four against Wexford at the Which weekend. Is a record, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it'll be that much, but I had I had like I had minus eighteen written down here and the more i think about it i think gary is just going to go like one more and like <laughs> i'm gonna set i'm gonna set a marker for gary he's going to go one more and he's going to beat me but i'm going to say mayo minus 22. <laughs> oh wow you got way off the 18 there okay right 22. Uh, i would imagine that there would be a less of a gap in the bookies between dublin and wexford than there would be between mayo and leitrim so for that and with the fact that dublin didn't come anywhere close to reaching that record landmark there at the weekend i'm just going to say minus 21. i reckon it's going to be about minus 19 but i'm going to say minus 21 is my answer <gasps> reveal it there maestro pj <laughs> <laughs> you talked uh, yourself out of a victory Gary, three two Oh, you you brought it back to two all, and you overthought the last one. The worst thing that happened was you going first for that one. You had the honor. 
Next week, I'll give it to Gary. I'm determined for you to get a win here. But, uh, these, are the mind games, like, these are the mind games I play, Mick. This is what I do to people, you know? They're overthinking themselves. <laughs> You've absolutely perplexed people with your constant victories. You're like the dubs. I don't know if you're going for seven in a row like they are, but it can't be too far off at this stage. But uh, thank you, lads, anyway, uh, for a good effort and for another great victory for... Um, for Gary, PJ can go home and think all week now. He's already at home, actually, uh, but he can stay at home and think all week about how he uh, he overthought it. And now next week, don't come in. Don't think at all, PJ. And we'll see what happens. But, uh, that... I'll, try, I'll try not to overthink overthinking. <laughs> exactly yeah. so that's uh that's guess the handicaps for this week five football games um to look forward to at the weekend uh we'll talk to darren o'sullivan about that on monday show thanks a million to pj and to gary thanks to morris thanks to finch for his haircuts and definitely a, a huge thanks to shane mcgrath for brilliant analysis on the hurling and thank you for watching if you are watching on youtube please do subscribe to the channel and you will be uh let know when we have a new video up um we will be here with you every monday of course for ga embedded throughout the season but lots more on the vault's youtube channel as well for you to enjoy and if you're listening on the podcast please also do subscribe there we'll be back with you next monday enjoy the football next week